Now we will configure our IP network. And we're at our router page here at 192.168.0.1, the default IP address for this device, but not for long. However, first we have to log in with our new credentials and sysadmin and the password. And we're in. And we see we do have an internet connection. We have the check mark. Our wireless is running. And we have one wired client connecting right now. Now that's all well and good, but I'm going to go to the advanced section. I usually bypass the quick setup and the basic and go right to the advanced tab of a router uh, to make the changes. So we'll do that. We'll go to network. Then we'll go down to LAN. We'll start with the local area network side, the internal side. And that's our local area network where our computers are. And so right now the IP address is 192.168.0.1. That's what we're going to modify according to our IP scheme. And if you remember from our network map, our Soho router was going to be 10.252.0.101. That's going to be the gateway. And let's look further at our technical details. And you might remember we went over this with the IP scheme. The IP network is going to be 10.252.0.0. And so all the computers and this router are going to be on that network. For example, the gateway address 10.252.0.101. The subnet mask is going to be a double 255, making this a classless network. So we need to know this information. We'll go back to the router screen and we'll change that information now to 10.252.0.101. And again, always double check that stuff. Double check what IP addresses you're using. If you're entering information manually, always double check. And then we're going to change that subnet mask to a double 255. Now, when we save this configuration, that's going to change the IP of the router. So our connectivity is going to be lost through this browser. And in addition, we'll have to change the IP of the network adapter I'm using to connect out to this router. So we're going to save this configuration now. And while that's going on, we'll look at the network map and we see that my AV editor computer, which is what I'm working at now, has the IP address 10.252.0.254. That's the IP address we want to use. Now, we could release the IP that this guy is using and renew it and get an IP address on the 10.252 network, but we want to use a specific address here, uh, not one that's dynamically assigned by the router. So we're actually going to change that guy in our IP settings. And so we'll bring up the network connections uh, window here. And I have a couple connections on this system. This is the main network that I connect to, which is fine. And here's DPro42. That's a separate network card altogether that I'll be using to connect out to the DPro42.com network. So we're going to right click on that and go to properties. That brings up the properties of that card. We'll go to TCP IP, go to properties, and that brings up the IP properties sheet. And so we're going to say, use the following IP address and we'll enter the information manually instead of obtaining an IP address automatically. And again, we want to make sure we're using the right info here. So we check, we always double check 10.252.0.254 is what we want with a double 255 uh, subnet mask. So we'll put that in now 10.252.0.254. Subnet mask 255, 255. And I'm just pressing the tab key to quickly get to each next field. And then the default gateway is the router 10.252.0.101. And we put the same in for the DNS server, although it's not really necessary, but we'll put that in. And we're actually going to change that later when we uh, set up the server. And we'll click OK for that. Say yes for multiple gateways. We'll talk more about that later on in the course and close out here. And I want to make sure that I can connect to that router 
and you might want to do that within the command line or the PowerShell. We could do that with the ping command. Uh, the first thing I might want to do is check with an IP config and check this local system. And I'll show you a little bit of what's happening here with this system. Here's my main network Ethernet card, and it's IP version 4. We're on the 192.168.41 network. The other guy, the DPro42 card, he is on 10.252.0.254. Subnet mask, default gateway, so everything that we entered. And you could do this with the uh, net sh command as well if you wanted to in the command prompt or the PowerShell. Just make sure you're in elevated mode, meaning open the application as an administrator. And so we'll go ahead and try a ping to the router now. Ping space 10.252.0.101. And we get replies. That means the router has completed its configuration and restarted, rebooted if necessary. And we are getting replies from that guy. So we should be able to reconnect via the uh, browser. And you see here, you got that uh, default TP link Wi-Fi.net and all that kind of stuff. I usually don't like to go by the names that a manufacturer might give you. Again, I like to go by the IP. So 10.252.0.101. And here we are. Here's our TP-Link device. The IP has been changed. It rebooted. Now we can connect again. And by the way, if you want to work with a router like this, but you don't want to buy the router, you can use an emulator. And if we go back to TP-Link's website here, uh, I have the AC5400 page open, but they have emulators for all their devices. And most companies do nowadays. If you're using Asus or D-Link or whoever, and if we click on that, we see all the emulators and uh, down here is the C5400. You don't have to use that. You could use the 1200 that would work well or the 1900. I have those on my network also, but if you want to follow along directly, you can go with the Archer C5400 and uh, we would use version two because that's the hardware I'm using. And then it gives you a full emulator. It's the same thing. It's all, everything is the same that you would see that I'm doing minus a couple configurations. And so you could do a lot of the stuff that I'm showing right within the emulator. Okay, so back to the real device and we're on 10.252.0.101. We'll log in once again. All right, and we're good. So we've modified the IP address on the LAN side. So that's good. Now we want to configure DHCP. And so we're going to do that now. We'll click on DHCP server. And by default, DHCP is enabled. And it gives a range. It gives a big range. We don't necessarily want that range. And we have to go back to our network documentation to find out what the range was that we wanted. And that was 10.252.0.150 through 10.252.0.239. So not a huge range, but that's what I want to use. 150 through 239. So we're going to put that in now. And we have to make sure to change both of the last two octets here. Dot zero, dot .239. So our range of IP addresses, it's called the IP address pool here. It's also known as a DHCP scope. It's 10.252.0.150 through 10.252.0.239. We'll double check that with what we had in our network documentation. And it looks good. And you always want to double check and make sure that everything is right before you save these configurations. And so any devices that try to obtain an IP address automatically from this network, we'll get an IP within this range decided on by the router. We're going to leave the address lease time the same. Uh, in some cases, you might change this. You might change this to a week. It depends. You want to check the policies of your company uh, before you set this up. The default gateway is going to be dot 101, and we're not too interested in primary or secondary DNS. We will be when we set up our server. So we're going to save that now. That saves the configuration. So now in some 
instances, you would need to assign reservations. And we have a whole bunch of reserved IPs that we don't want to use within DHCP. Uh, 1 through 149 and 240 through 254. And some of the important ones for that include 254, because that's going to be, that is the static IP address assigned to my AV editor computer. And also 102 and 103, which are assigned to the network attached storage and the server, or will be assigned to those. And also 240, which will be assigned to the Cisco switch. So these are important ones. And we'll just use 254 as an example. On this particular router, you can add address reservations. Just click add, and you can add the MAC address of a device and the IP address so that the specific IP address will be saved for that MAC address. And so, for example, if we go back to our uh, PowerShell here, do another IP config slash all, we can look at the MAC address that we're using here, the physical address, 0862680D683. And, you know, we can plug that in along with the IP of this device. And so I'll plug that in now 08 62 66 80 D6 83. And then the IP that this guy is supposed to be using or is using. 10.252.0.254 and we'll call this AV editor and we'll click OK and that adds that guy on there as a reservation. This IP address cannot be handed out by the DHCP server. Now with this particular device you can't do ranges of IP reservations. With say Windows Server and other devices you can do that. Uh, more advanced devices. But it's not really that important because my scope is just 150 through 239. So this router will not hand out anything beyond that, anything outside of that range automatically. So we can use static addresses and just make sure that they're not within that range without any worries. But I just wanted to show how to add one address reservation just in case, because you never know, you might be using the entire range. What if we were doing uh, dot one through dot 254. Well, then we would want to add address reservations for the server, this AV editor computer, and so on. But that's how you'd add an address uh, reservation. So we want to make sure that this is all complete. Save it one more time for good measure. And we're good to go with the local area networking side. And other devices can now be given IP addresses on that network. AV Editor is connecting, and they can also connect directly out to the internet. 